okay, a new day. In fact, uh, a sad day for me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> My nano VNA is dead. Look at this guy. Okay, so as long as it's behaving like this, let's dismantle it and take a look inside. And let me tell you what I've done in the spirit of, you know, fixing it, but no chance. Because of the good people of the internet, I found the problem and that will be solved as soon as the parts are on my bench. Okay, here is the display and that's the problem. Under this shield here, we have a circuit and this is AD. Let me check for that. Okay, so this is a, a circuit from analog devices and it's called ADF4350. Anyway, I don't want to talk about it because it's very, very complicated and just take a look here, only the manual, it's like 30 pages or anyway, doesn't matter. Well, so these guys here, in fact, there are two of these. So we got one here and another one here. So these two circuits are responsible for all the all the functions in here, you know, like uh, uh, f synthesizer, you know, uh, doing all this uh, um, frequencies, uh, generating frequencies, uh, and so on. It's looking like one of these got broke or burned. And uh, what I've done, I switched in between with my uh, hot air station, very careful, nothing happens. So I believe both of them are burned. I got an order of four pieces on the way, so hopefully I will solve it. Anyway, it's a really, really nice device, really complicated, you know. We got uh, some uh, power regulators here and so many, many other things. The point is now that it's not keeping the memories. I can't calibrate it anymore. And uh, even if the connection to the computer is working, the software can't see anything workable, let's say. But what's funny, if we go from 50 megahertz to 140 megahertz, in this area, it's working. I mean, it's working somehow. You can see it's a lot of noise here and it's a lot of artifacts and so on. But as long as we go farther than 150, it's getting crazy. <laughs> Look there. Well, so this is done. I mean, it's broke. That's it. Okay. But why? And then I found why. You see, that's absolutely my mistake. So I was working to a filter. Okay, let's say this is a filter, you know. In fact, it's not a filter, it's an attenuator. So I've been working to a filter and uh, this little guy was connected to the computer. It was connected to the computer and of course using the nano VNA saver. Why, why I'm showing you this? Because I just want you to let you know and you should take care of this and avoid anything like this. Okay, so my mistake, it was my mistake. And that's why I'm pissed to know because how could I do that? <laughs> how could that happen to me? <laughs> this is the funny part of the things. <laughs> you know, do you have those moments when you say, oh my God, how could I be so stupid? Okay. So, here I have the, the multimeter. And, I know I was just working with this guy here, you see, doing some things, all right. 
And what I found, if I'm connecting my soldering iron with the ground, let me turn this off, to the ground here. And suddenly, look there, I have 94 volts AC. This is, this is crazy. That's why I have those strange noises when I'm recording and all this stuff, you know. Look, 94.8 volts. Of course, it's not a big deal, you say. Uh, the amps, in fact, it's merely amps. DC, AC. Okay, now we are on milliamps AC current. Let me have my soldering iron here. And look there, good people, we have like 0 0.067 milliamps. And this is way too much for a device like this to handle. So that was the problem. It's a ground leaking problem. And it's not the first time I encounter this. And uh, I've been taking everything off the mains, you know, the computer, the sound card, the, all my, you know, the Yamaha monitors and everything and anything. And I couldn't find anything strange. So, uh, I even changed the power supply of this little guy. Same story. And I still have a single shot to do. Oh no. I can't because my power supply now doesn't even doesn't even have a ground. This is this is the power supply I'm using for my for my soldiering iron. It's a Toshiba and it's just a simple, you see, it's just a simple uh, two wires connector. So I think the single, the single solution to this is to build myself a um, galvanic isolation computer, something like this. So we have the first coil we have the magnetic and the second coil so i'll apply here 230 volts ac of course and i'll have here 230 volts ac of course this transformer should be like at least 100 watts for powering my uh, my soldering iron and uh, that will be the single solution. Okay, guys. Thank you for now. I hope it was useful. And uh, in the meantime, well, just came in my mind. Why not using a classic transformer to feed this guy? This guy is around 60 to 80 watts. So, yeah, maybe, let's say if I have 19 volts, that's usually working with 19 and two 19 volts. That means for 100 watts, I need maybe five amps. Maybe seven, seven amps. And to have a classic transformer, rectifier, and uh, maybe a capacitor or something. 1000 yeah i'll try that too and uh, we'll talk about this in a future uh, video so rule number one when you're working with sensible devices uh, audio preamps uh, any kind of low level uh, amplifiers first check your uh, connection check about uh, check about uh, ground leaking look there 94 95 volts
Okay, so that's it for today and uh, see you soon with some other projects. And uh, in the meantime, please like, please subscribe, push the button. And uh, of course, don't forget to have fun like I had. Goodbye. Oh.